This week we're going to talk about array formulas. Let's have a look at the example of this week where we are looking at exam results for a teacher. We interrupt this recording for an important message about types. Today we're going to talk about type theory because it's super important in order for us to be able to understand this week's material. So we're going to start really, really basic, so don't worry. This is easy, right? 2 plus 3 is 5. But these are not just numbers, they also have the type of being a number. And I'm going to annotate all types with a different color. So what we are calculating here is a number and a number result in a number. But this is not how we write formulas in Excel. Well, we can write numbers in a formula, but we can also use cells. So let's have a look at how that looks. So we have these two cells in a spreadsheet, and we can say A1 plus A2, in this case, is also 5. So what are the types here? Well, 5 is a number, that's easy, but A1 is not a number, it's a cell, it's a reference to a number. So let's draw it like this and say something that contains a number and something that contains a number, we can add the numbers and then we can get a number. There are different types in Excel as well. It's not just numbers. Suppose we have this in a cell, a string, a piece of text. We can calculate on text as well. So what are the types here? We have, again, something that contains a text, and the result of the function is a text. So these functions all take in the same values, a number resulting in a number, or text resulting in a text. But there are also functions that can take in a certain type, but return a different type. Let's have a look at how that looks like. For instance, if we're calculating with dates. Oops. We have a date in our spreadsheet now, and we can calculate with dates as well. We've seen that in the past. We could, for instance, calculate the month of A1, which would result in 1. So here you see an example of something that takes in a certain value. It takes in a container, something that contains a cell containing a date, but it results in a number. So there, you take in a date, but you return a number. So sometimes the types of the inputs are different from the types of the output. They don't necessarily have to match. So now let's have a look at the most complicated construction that we're going to look at in these week's videos. So it's still pretty basic, I hope. Suppose we have a range. We have one, two, three in a spreadsheet. We can calculate on that, we know how to do that. So we can say something like the sum of A1 to A3, which is in this case six. So what are the types here? Let's start with six, because that's super easy. Six is a number, we know that. But what do we have here? We could say we have three number containers, three values that have a number. But of course it doesn't necessarily have to be three. We can also say, now we're summing, oops, we're summing until a5. Would, would that give the function a different type? We would have to add another container here and one here. So we are not going to do that. This is not the way that we are going to write this down. What we are saying here is we're summing over a list of numbers. So the type, as I will write that down in subsequent videos, is a list of numbers and it, the result of the function is a number. And this is very important to remember for the remainder of this week's videos. That was the end of the typing sequence.